So Goldman Sachs, the, we were in this lawsuit, and they were forced to, to, after eight years of fighting to turn up how big is this obscure thing called securities lending. Securities lending, there's a desk within all the big banks called securities lending. You'll understand in a few minutes what it does. How big was it? I knew it was at least 5%. I thought it might be 15%. 15% at Goldman Sachs would be quite a large number. I uh, heard rumors it might be as big as a quarter of Goldman Sachs came from this thing called securities lending. People didn't know much about 10 years ago. Well, the answer turns out to be 75%. 75% of Goldman Sachs' revenue comes from an activity that they have kept up, that has been obscured from the public. It's called securities lending. And this is why it cost me $30 million to get that piece of paper. 75% of Goldman Sachs prime brokerage, you know, there's the hedge fund and there's the prime broker. 75 per, Goldman Sachs is a securities lending desk with the name of a bank on the door. And this is a big secret, it has been a big secret. Uh, and it turns out that of that 75%, 76% comes from lending a particular class of stock called a hard to borrow stock. So it turns out that this is Goldman Sachs's business. And I think the same is true for the other five big prime brokers on Wall Street. Uh, no reason to think this is any different. About that three quarters of their revenue, and by the way, since the securities lending desk tends to be a couple small number of guys named Joe and Tony and Louie from Staten Island, the expenses are very, very tiny. So while it's 75% of the revenue, my guess is it's about 100, and 100 to 150% of all the profit of prime brokerage on Wall Street it comes from this area of people that's this really obscure little corner of Wall Street. This is what it, how it's supposed to work. Securities lending, you, you may, you know what? Short selling is probably short selling is when somebody you're always told people borrow stock and then they sell it well, that's That's the idea, but in reality in our market What all they have to do is locate stock that they'll be able to borrow Then they can sell and three days later when it's time to deliver they get the stock that they located and did deliver So it's really the whole thing comes down to locates this thing called locates did they get a locate on stock before they short sold it? So imagine a pension fund has some stock. They, bank, they custodian it with a large prime broker. The large prime broker sees that there's a short seller out there who wants it to short sell. They will give a locate. They will tell that short seller, okay, you're good. You want to sell 100,000 shares of lumber liquidators. Go ahead. We have located the stock for you you can go ahead. And so I'm depicting that as the, the transfer of the locate is this symbol you see there. And let's say the short seller pays $20 for that. Well, believe it or not, 10 years ago, what I started sort of going super fly TNT on Wall Street about was I found out in 2004 how little there was to keep a prime broker, say in this case, from uh, when they see that person that they can collect, that one short seller they can collect $20 for, there's surprisingly little to keep them from s telling other short sellers, you know what, you have, you're good for locates too. And collecting from each of these other short sellers payment for this. Well, some more short sellers end up with locates and then can sell into the market than there is actual shares. And you'd be amazed how little there is in the systems to prevent them from doing this. And we have the SEC on tape in a sort of quasi-public back office conference of Wall Street scolding a couple guys from Goldman and Morgan in front of the crowd saying, you know, basically you have to work with us. We do these audits into your locate trails, and when it gets back to where you're supposed to have recorded whose stock it is, you guys have recorded Mickey Mouse or Three Dots or something like that. You know, work with us. This is the director. This is very high up in the enforcement arm sort of pleading scolding with Goldman and Morgan. Uh, in part because of the attention we started bringing to this about 10 years ago, the pension funds started getting smarter and saying, if you're, if you're making money loaning our stock out, we want a piece of the action. We want you to kick back 30% to us. And so how that should work is the prime broker gets their 20 and six goes up to the pension fund. Well, what the pension funds figured out, they, what the prime brokers figured out they could do in that case 
when they is they they go to a friendly prime broker in between and they say we'll give you the locate for let's say two dollars then they cut in the pension fund for their 30 percent or 60 cents and then that middle prime broker loans it uh, gives the locate on takes the twenty dollars and there's a back office game in the repo market where they basically give a half of the kickback. And then this has all come out in a variety of lawsuits on Wall Street, that this turns out to be this regular practice. There's this kickback done in, in the overnight repo market that, to, to equalize the cut. So that's what really happens. I just refer to this as, as mischief. Uh, there are amazingly few controls, no controls, to keep this going on in the back offices of Wall Street in the last decade. Uh, and so that is why in 2008, Alan Greenspan was naming settlement as one of the parts of the crisis because all of this craziness that had been going on, one of the effects is a, a bunch of fake stock, a bunch of stock enters the market that's not really stock, that doesn't really, isn't backed up by anything.